Let's get into. All right, so we watched the reality show, Gerard Carmichael. Man, I'm gonna say just my first initial, my first feeling after watching episode one was this felt like the humiliation ritual for what he did to the Golden Globes. I don't remember the Golden Globes. So he was the host hosting. of the Golden Globes, and he pretty much just like shit the bed his whole performance. He was just like talking trash. He wasn't really being funny. He didn't really have like a um, anything written down for his performance, basically. Like, he had nothing prepared. And he was just kind of just being snarky the whole time. And that's, that's, that's why it just feels like they was just they was just doing his way of kind of just to shit on him a little bit. Mm-hmm. And when you start, you can get into it. So Gerard Carmichael has a new reality show on HBO Max. Well, Max now. And the first episode is out as of now. The last special that he won the Oscar or which whichever one, I think it was Emmy, Emmy. The last special that he won the Emmy for, he let us know that he um, confessed his love to his best friend Lottie Da. We assumed it was Tyler. First episode, he's sitting down with Tyler with the whole like production team, cameras, lights, things of that nature. If y'all know Tyler, the creator, I have been an Odd Future fan since. Probably, like, I was an Odd Future fan since, like, 20, 2009, 2010, right? I've been, I was, like, watching that man's YouTube videos, all of his little, like, vlogs and stuff. So I feel like I, from the outside, know his personality very well. That man is unserious as hell, like, highly unserious. So he tells Tyler, he's like, I think I'm developing feelings for you. Tyler goes, ha, 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 you dumb bitch. What? What do you mean? <laughs> So Tyler basically, like, what you said, gave him an out by saying, ha, 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 you dumb bitch. Like, ah, this is a joke. You're joking, right? And then <laughs> a year later, Gerard makes this whole thing and doubles down. And he's like, so are we doing this? Like, I, I confess my love for you. It's been awkward since then. And it was just so, like, awkward to watch because Kevin, like, t- Kevin, Tyler does not want Gerard at all he orders food and then he's like he finishes all of his food he's like licking his fingers which is like all of the body language was so unserious from Tyler's part <laughs> on Tyler's part bitch. and then um call me a stupid bitch I did <laughs> that Tyler laugh like yeah I did I did he's like yeah and I stand and on I that and I, I do it like, again brushed it off I know no. Yeah. All right, so let's get into just a little bit what was going on before that led up to this. This nigga Jar Carmichael has an infatuate infatuation for the for the small white boys. He was cleaning house. Oh, that was after. That was before that. That was the end of the episode. What do you mean? He he interviewed Tyler in the beginning. He had the whole um no, I don't know. That's not how that happened. The, oh the, the end it was of the, the middle that he was sucking on the white boy's toes. Yeah, that was literally the the end of the show was him talking to Tyler in that scene that we just discussed. So I just thought it was nuts how crazy he was going for the white boys. He had the grinder going nuts. He had probably like three of them. They just showed they came all ready, mm-hmm. ready to jump on it. And so it kind of confused me because it seemed like he was given top energy, even when he was sucking the toes. There was still some top energy. So my question was, which one was the top between him and Tyler? Who, who do you who did you gather was the top between those two? Who would be the top? How would they do it? Would they have to like like rock paper scissors for it? They both give me verse energy. Honestly, I feel like they would probably just you think they switch. Yeah, that's wild. The switching. You ever seen a Shameless? Have you ever watched that show? A little bit. Depends on what season you're talking about. So in the later seasons, the uh, the brother, the gay one, mm-hmm. he ends up like dating like a transgender uh, man, and they're both like are supposed to be tops. So they end up like switching <laughs> the whole season. That's like their whole little conversation. I can't believe you never watched that show that they seen there. It was I- incredibly Caucasian. So I mean, it was it got his shit off. They had I that, they had that for black like girl the first on there. Three seasons. After that, it was very repetitive, and then I was really like, I couldn't watch Frank's shit anymore. He was annoying as fuck. 
But um, Frank was the best TV. I guy. feel like I, yeah, I knew you would think that. Um, <laughs> that falls in line with your personality very much. That nigga held it so, down. So uh. That shit was so uncomfortable to watch. Like, have you ever been the friend in that situation that either wanted to make things more or somebody wanted to make things more with you? Yeah, in high school, I had a crush on like my best friend, and he was like, nah. <laughs> not kicked my back in but he he definitely like let me down very easy he told you he wasn't his type no he literally had never and i don't think till now has dated a black woman he had he just let you down easy then he said he was like hey it's not you baby it's the it's where you were born (laughs) that's what he basically had to say to you i don't think i've ever had someone come to me like most of the girls that i've been friends with like they didn't really want the relationship it was more like the physical like it never was like Oh, we should be boyfriend, girlfriend. Now, it usually always was. We was already doing physical stuff. And then she's like, well, you might as well be my boy now. Like, you're already up in it. Like, that's how I knew most girls are with it. Like, that's how y'all be. Y'all be like, oh, you're already up in it. So you might as well mm-hmm. cuff it. That's, that's what we called it back in the day. You, you might as well cuff it. So, But I did have an instance where, like, I tried to be the friend. And, like, I just, you know, it never got, it got, it got to places, but it didn't go crazy, like. We didn't become a couple, but there was a physical attraction. Like I said, it usually ends that like that for me, man. Most most folks just wanted the guy that looked like J. Cole, and they didn't they didn't want to keep him though, man. Happens. I feel like everyone was talking about um was talking about Tyler and Gerard in this, but the thing that stuck out to me the most was him laying on that couch and how content he looked with the with that white twink's fucking toes in his mouth. <laughs> Sir, like, I don't know. I just feel like for African-American advancement, there was no reason for you to put that on camera. Like, why did you put that on camera? I, I think. Like, why did you, why did you, why did you feel it necessary to show us the compilation of white men that she was fucking? Like, I, I just feel like that was weird. After showing us that you were rejected by this black man that you love so much, was it like... Like I don't know what it was. Well, I mean, again, the, we, we won't we won't argue about that. The, the how the clips came out. Yeah, because you're wrong. Because he started with Tyler coming into the uh, the the thing and sitting down. But go ahead. But they didn't talk about anything until he just said he went into they did the stand up stuff. But the thing I was going to say it was all in between. You weren't paying attention though. I was you paying were attention. Back and forth. I was watching the whole thing. Okay, you're I wrong. Was, we'll we'll I was play invested. it back. We'll add a clip in to um to um verify that I was correct. No, because you're not going to want to because you'll be wrong. You'll be like, don't put that in there. I don't want that in there. That's going to make me look crazy. So let's get into an actual conversation about this. What I think that Have I don't we not been having an actual conversation about this. No, the whole we, time? We, we've been brushing over the main topic that's really the head here because you even kind of brushed over what you said. Do you think and I think it's kind of clear because I do that black men, regardless of their sexual orientation, wholeheartedly value the acceptance, even if it's. Being with a white person, like a a black guy, the look of dominating a white body is attractive to black men with power who who have assumed a little bit of power in this world. That is what this stems from. Like that's why I'm pretty sure he was the dominant person with everybody he's with. I'm sure that's the same way Tyler didn't pick him. It has with nothing to do with the fact that I like you or don't like you. It's the fact that I don't value the body that you're in. The they bo- both come out and said that they like twinks. Twinks historically are little gay white specifically men and they they they're tiny they're always bottoms like twinks can't be tops like period point blank you're not a twink if you're a top correct me if i'm wrong but yeah so all well, of speak th- speak to the white body part and dominating the white body so yeah i feel like if you are a black man who has been especially that looks like them, right? Like, they're not conventionally attractive men. They were probably made fun of, rejected over and over and over again by other black men, other black, probably just black women because they both just came out. So consistently rejected by black women and then made fun of by 
all of the whites because y'all are dark skinned, lanky, African looking niggas. And then now y'all have money. And then what was exotic and out of reach to you now is within reach and you can make it do what you want, basically. So that's probably enticing in some way, shape or form. I don't know if that's what's going on with Tyler and and Gerard, but both of y'all have Tyler has made it glaringly obvious in his music, in his interviews he said he looking for white boys to fuck. He said he was trying to fuck Justin Bieber for two years and apologized to Selena Gomez. Gerard had this grinder compilation of little white twinks coming into his hotel room. Like, obviously, these men <laughs> feel like the proximity to whiteness is more successful. And then dominating that, bending it over. And fucking it probably is a whole different feeling that is is something that I will never experience in my life. I think it's so tough for people to kind of accept Tyler as being any kind of like gay or bisexual. Everyone Be- keeps thinking that he's joking still. I don't to me. I think the nigga is asexual. That's how the nigga comes up to me. Like he I think everything up until the action of sex is where he that's where the line is drawn at. Mm-hmm. Like he, he he everything is so funny and amusing up until doing it, and I think that's where it, it just all stems from. So that's why I think he couldn't even really know how to respond because the the proximity to sex was so close in that in that you know they could have just left that room and got busy if they wanted to. You know, gay niggas really don't need too much. <laughs> in too, gay culture, the hookup culture is crazy. They don't like, need too much of a turnaround time, <laughs> you know, for the knockdown. So the bottoms do. I, I was gonna, I was gonna ask you about that, cause you would think that if somebody's coming into a, an exit like that, you would kind of be a little more mindful, no? Bottoms are generally just always mindful, but they don't get that stereotype. What do you mean? They get the stereotype like they ready to bust the 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 bussy for anybody. No, I I mean they're always mindful to keep their shit clean so that they can bust it open for anybody. Oh, so you? I thought you were making it seem like they were more. They had dis- discretion with their bussy. No. No, gay men are whores. <laughs> mm-hmm. I think that was the biggest takeaway from episode one, no? No, the biggest takeaway from episode one was that Gerard Carmichael has a humiliation kink. You think that's what it is? Like, obviously, because why did you get those cameras? And then, like, it was just so many. It was more than one stand-up special, too. So, like, between him talking to Tyler, he's plugging in, like, um him at his stand-up specials talking about like what's about to what we're about to see next so he has talked about this in smaller groups over and over again he said he said that multiple times that he sent the text to tyler locked his phone or put it on airplane mode and like and then like went on stage or like did that and then came to record this like my nigga you you like that feeling of like anticipation and anxiety and all like you that that needs to I be think unpacked. He only did it once no he did it twice he did it um once when he was going up on stage and then he did it another time right before he went to his therapist and his therapist was like oh we love this but it was two times because there was another um when he asked tyler to go to the emmys with him he he asked him put his phone on airplane mode went got up on stage and then read the reply no, he there didn't. Wasn't a reply. He, there wasn't a reply until later, but he picked up his phone and looked at it while he was on stage. And the people in the audience were like giving him Cause um, when, advice and stuff. When he asked him about the Emmys, that was the part where he just was like, I got to shoot and I can't make it, but congratulations type thing. He asked him about the Emmys. And then right after that is when we had the whole compilation of Grinder Boys because he was sitting with the white boy and he was like, um, I need a backup date to the Emmys just in case. Be, um, the person that I the actually phone. love. No, he was standing. He was sitting next to him. Um, no, he asked. You're, you're, you're confused. I'm saying he asked. Okay, let's just get off. No, he he start. texted Tyler and yeah, asked everything him. he said with Tyler yeah. was over the phone. Yeah, everything over with Tyler. And then right after he um, sent the text, he did the stand up special thing. And then after that was the grinder thing because he was sitting next to the guy. And then he was like, just in case the All man right, that I love is, can't come. This, this is important. It's not important because you're wrong about the timeline. No, you are. All right. Um, this nigga gonna look stupid as fuck. No, I'm not. I'm, you're, then you're just not going to look like anything because I'm going to protect you. This is what I do. Uh, we forgot to acknowledge, too, during that Tyler conversation, uh, that nigga said, I'm big straight. <laughs> you cut me off. <laughs> what do you mean? 
You cut me off before I got to that. I was talking about they were eating, and then he licks his fingers after he's done eating, and he asks them, is, is he going to finish that food? And he's like, I don't want that. I, I don't want none of that. that. I'm big straight on that. Big straight. <laughs> don't want none of that. <laughs> I feel like that was just cut like that to make it seem like he was trying to shit on him. Because that was like, well, but it to was say cut. big straight is nuts. <laughs> Yo, I'm big straight. Bro, I feel like Tyler did that on purpose. <laughs> because I never thought that Tyler was indirect until this. And I was like, oh, Tyler is very avoidant. He has a very avoidant communication style. <laughs> he does not want to, he, he doesn't want to address this. He was like, I'm just going to fade out of your life forever. <laughs> Which I... Feel you, my nigga, as someone who also has a avoidant communication style, attachment style. 